Welcome back to Blender Daily. Over on Instagram, I've been posting Blender tips on a daily basis for more than two and a half years now. Today I had the idea that I could create a compilation of my five favorite tips of this month. So here we go. I hope you'll enjoy. This episode is sponsored by Polygonic, the creators of my favorite Blender add-ons. Click the link in the video description to learn more about Botanic, a huge tree and grass library with hundreds of awesome high quality nature assets optimized for cycles and EV. I'm a big fan of their plugin and I've been using their assets for more than a year now. Click the link in the video description to learn more. Okay, so the first tip is going to be a very quick one as I just want to demonstrate a useful shortcut that I use all the time when animating. So whenever you are in the timeline or in the dope sheet editor, you can just use the shortcut control tab to quickly switch to the graph editor. Then you can make your changes in here and once you're happy with it, just press control tab again to get back to the dope sheet or the timeline. I think this is extremely handy as I switch between the timeline and the graph editor all the time when animating in Blender. And by the way, another useful tip that I found in the graph editor is that we can actually use proportional editing in here. In order to enable it, click on this button up here. And when I now select the keyframe and press G to move, I can scroll up with the middle mouse button to increase the area of influence and transform multiple keyframes at once. I think this is extremely useful if you have an animation with lots of keyframes, like the one I have here, for example, so I can transform a lot of keyframes at the same time. And by the way, you can also change the area of influence with the page up and page down buttons if you don't have a mouse wheel on your mouse. And in order to quickly enable and disable this option, you can use the shortcut O, which is the same in the 3D viewport or any other editor that supports proportional editing. Okay, so next let me demonstrate why you might get transparency issues in material preview. So currently I am in material preview mode and when I switch to render preview, you can see that this plane is actually transparent on the sides. But as soon as I switch to material preview, we only get those black areas and not the actual transparency. This is because this material preview is using EV and EV doesn't support transparency by default. So in order to fix this, we need to switch the render engine to EV, then go to the material properties and under settings, change the blend mode from opaque to alpha clip or any of the other alpha modes. So you might need to try out different alpha modes and see what works best for your shader. Now we can go back to the cycles render engine and the material preview is still working and nothing should have changed in the render preview. An issue I came across this month was that I had a particle system on one of my objects and lots of other objects that I wanted to copy the same particle system to. Luckily, there was an easy solution for that that I now want to share with you. First of all, select all the objects that you want to copy the particles to and then shift click on the object that already has the particle system applied to it. Then press F3 to open up the search menu. The shortcut to open up the search menu might be spacebar for you, but for most it is probably F3. Then type in copy particle system and select this option right here. And now the particle system is already copied. This is extremely simple and saved me a lot of time on one of my projects. If you want to focus on something specific in your scene, you can just use the shortcut Alt B to create a cutout of the viewport. I always use this when I work on interiors or closed rooms, as it really allows me to see into the room and focus on what I need to focus on. This really only affects the viewport and doesn't change the render at all. And you can just use the shortcut Alt B again to reset. If I select a single face in edit mode, I can press E to extrude it. If I select all the faces, however, and press E, 
It doesn't really extrude it, but rather creates a duplicate of it. If I want to extrude the individual faces, however, I can use the shortcut Alt E instead, which will open up those extrude options. And here you can see that I have the option to extrude individual faces, which I think looks really cool on this torus. But there are even more options. So for example, if I select this loop around the torus and press Alt E, I can select extrude faces along normals, which basically scales the extrusion along the normals. I think it is really valuable to know that those options exist and you can always access them with the shortcut Alt E in edit mode. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please let me know in the comments which tip you found the most useful. My favorite is definitely the shortcut to quickly switch between the timeline and the graph editor. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram for more Blender tips like the ones I showed you today. I am Nick from Blender Daily. See you in the next one.